Towards the end of the previous video, we saw that FOSREST bundle comes with the concept of a view layer. And by using the view layer, we allow our front end or API consumer to send in and receive data in a variety of formats. Now, as far as we as FOSREST bundle integrators are concerned, as long as we wrap our data, whether that's entities or arrays or even Symphony's form class, FOSREST bundle can handle the process of serializing that data for us into JSON or XML or any other format that we have configured. Now, this is really useful. This is a solid example of how FOSREST bundle saves us a bunch of time. But also this won't just work right out of the box. So you can see our current fosrest.yaml file on screen. And as we've covered, this will be combined with the default configuration to come up with the active configuration that fosrest bundle will use when handling incoming requests. And the problem right now is that we have not provided any more explicit configuration. And so we're falling back to some defaults. As we saw at the end of the previous video, we had a failing test. And this is because we haven't provided any more explicit configuration. So we're falling back to some defaults and those defaults don't work the way that we expect. This leads to our 500 error. What this error is telling us is as we haven't configured our setup any further, we're falling back to HTML. And for a HTML response, FOSREST bundle wants to use Twig. Now we actually do have Twig installed implicitly because we ran the command composer require profiler pack. However, templating is not enabled explicitly in our setup. And at this stage, we can actually use the profiler to view the failed request and take a look at a nicer formatted variation of the same error message. Now, when presented with an error message like this, our default reaction is to try and solve the problem. And as already mentioned, as we do have Twig installed, if we go into the framework.yaml file and enable the templating and set the engine to Twig, then we actually get a little bit further with this problem. It's just unfortunate that we get further away from the actual solution. So the new error message becomes unable to find a template. And again, it's not always super easy to see this stuff in the log files, particularly if it's the first time that you're really using the log files. And thankfully, we can revert back to looking in the profiler where we'll see this exact same error, but presented in a nicer fashion. But we actually don't want to work with HTML. So what we need to do is start by getting rid of that addition to framework.yaml if you've just added it. Now, FOSREST bundle comes with a format listener, and this allows our API consumer or front end to send in data in any format that we support. So that might be JSON or XML. And then the normalization process is going to be taken care of for us. And normalization just means turning JSON or XML into an array. So in order for this to work, we need to configure the format listener with some rules. Now, we only need one rule. And this rule is saying that for any path starting with the slash, so literally any path at all, we're going to accept either XML or HTML. And that seems a little bit strange, but stick with me. Now, earlier we took off the format placeholder of our roots. So even though right now we've said that we can either work with XML or HTML, if working with HTML, then we couldn't really easily set the content type. So we're pretty much forced to just work with XML. In this case, by including the format on the generated route, the API consumer could send in the request for album.xml or album.html, and then FOSREST bundle is gonna be able to determine what it is that you're trying to do. As it stands, I only want to work with JSON, so I'm gonna get rid of the format from the route as before. I'm gonna change the fallback format and the priorities to just be JSON. Now, it's important to note that you can have multiple rules here. Just make sure that your more specific rules come first. So if, for example, you had your API on slash API and a HTML style website on the slash or on the root of your domain, make sure that the rule for slash API comes above simply the rule with the path of slash because slash API is more specific. So that's going to get matched first. So if we run the tests now, we should see a pass. However, unfortunately, in my case, I have something a little more fundamentally wrong. So this shouldn't affect you. Uh, unfortunately, my laptop crashed whilst I was recording. I had to reboot it. And because I'm not saving off my volumes, the container was destroyed and I've had to recreate the container. And as such, the database has been completely wiped out. And because of the way that Docker works, when I brought back up the stack, the database exists, but the expected tables or just album table in our case doesn't actually exist. So I'm going to have to rerun the migrations. Again, you shouldn't need to do this. And I wouldn't have needed to do this if I had set up volumes. Anyway, if we run this test now, everything passes as expected. 